Today on The Young and the Restless Nate and Audra hash out a plan, Lauren peppers Michael with questions about Phyllis, and Kyle picks up on a weird vibe between Summer and Daniel. In Crimson Lights, Lauren tells Michael she's still reeling from him telling her Phyllis is still alive. She asks what Daniel knew that only she would know. Michael says that he knew Stark was killed with scissors. He hopes Kyle and Jack keep this from Diane and Summer until he finds evidence. Lauren warns that for Phyllis to have gone to these lengths, she couldn't have done it willingly. They move to the patio, and Lauren says she's thrilled her best friend could be alive, but how could she do this to them? Phyllis would never. Michael wouldn't be too sure and reminds her how Phyllis was spinning out. Perhaps it's plausible that Phyllis went all out to turn the tables and subject Diane to the exact same type of hell she went through. They agree it's brilliant, if horrible. Lauren really hopes that Phyllis is still alive, but knowingly breaking their hearts. How do they come back from this? How does she? Outside the Abbott house, Kyle finds Summer dressed for work and sipping coffee. She thanks him for giving her space last night. She needed time to think. Kyle hopes it's just for the one night. He knows she got shocking news, but she can't keep shutting him out. I feel like I don't even know you right now, and I don't know what to do about it. Summer needs more time. Kyle reminds her this has all been hard on him too. Up until today, he thought she was punishing him for what his mom did, but now they know it was all a setup, and she didn't do anything to Phyllis. Summer questions if they really know that, she hasn't been able to see her mother. If it's true, things will get better. But it's not going to happen overnight. Kyle wants to drive her, but she has something to do on the way. Inside the house, Diane runs into Ashley, who glares at her. Diane reminds her they're about to become family. Ashley says she doesn't know the meaning of the word, and they'll never be family. She's going back to jail. Diane chirps. We'll see. Ash asks what she's up to. Diane has innocence on her side, along with Michael, Kyle, and Jack. At society, Nikki thinks Victoria's good mood has to do with Nate. Victoria wants to change the topic and starts complaining about Victor handing Adam an entire kingdom. Nikki says it's important to her father, so she should let him have it without bitter comments. Victoria gripes that it would have fit into Newman's portfolio perfectly. The conversation steers back to Nate and Nikki asks her daughter if she's given any thought at all to Elena. Victoria has to get back to the office and walks out, leaving her mother stunned. Daytime's best costumes and disguises. In the park, Nate is standing and thinking when Audra comes up behind him with two coffees. Two creams, one sugar, she says. Nate takes it and asks, What the hell were you thinking setting up Elena that way? You sent her to Lele knowing she could get her heart broken. What is wrong with you? Audra denies sending her to Los Angeles, but Nate counters she made damn sure she knew he wasn't out there alone. Audra didn't know he'd left that out and says Elena was already suspicious. As devastating as this breakup is for her, isn't it what's best for everyone? Nate says she didn't deserve to be treated this way. Audra suggests he let it go. They weren't a match and Elena wouldn't have gotten behind his new vision for the future. She's figured out he wants his and her thrones running the kingdom alongside Victoria. Audra goes on about how far Nate has risen so fast, and now he's in with Victoria personally and professionally, while making it seem like it was the boss lady driving it all along, well done, you. Nate informs her she has some facts wrong. The way things evolved with Victoria was not calculated, but it's strong and real. Audra muses, that sounds lovely. Nate find her the most amazing woman he's ever met. Audra was a little disappointed at first since she felt an attraction to him in the beginning. Nate asks if that was why she pushed Elena to go to L.A. At the jazz lounge, Summer thanks Chance for meeting her there. He asks what's going on. Summer knows this sounds crazy but she's wondering if he's heard the same rumor she has. Chance says Christine told her Daniel saw Phyllis alive. He thinks that since it came from Jack, someone he no longer trusts, he thinks it's just a ploy to get Diane off the hook. I think Diane didn't mean to kill your mom. I think something went sideways. He thinks Stark is involved somehow as well. But the notion of Phyllis being alive is a stretch and a scheme cooked up by Michael and Jack. Summer can't wrap her head around it, but she can't help but wonder if it were true, and her mom came back, what would happen to her going forward? Chance tells Summer that anything he would say would be speculation. Summer can handle it. Is there any way she could come back and not serve time in prison? 
Chance says it depends on what kind of evidence she presents. Summer worries about her being on the run and scared and wonders if Chance could protect her. Chance warns her not to put herself through that. At the park, Audra tells Nate she can't compete with the pull between him and Victoria. She shrugs that you can't always get what you want in life. Nate supposes not. Audra's ultimate goal is for him to see her as an ally, not an enemy. She wants him to have everything he desires. Nate guesses she expects something in return. They'll have to trust each other to get what exactly what they want. He knows what she wants. Audra confirms she wants to run Newman Media when he moves up. At the Abbott house, Tucker appears and Ashley tells him, Let's go somewhere. Tucker wonders if Dean wants to join them, and then needles her about her ankle monitor. Diane makes a joke and Ashley informs Tucker that the woman's become very optimistic about her circumstances. She's practically dancing on poor Phyllis' grave. Diane begins, poor Phyllis? Oh, you have no idea what. She stops herself and simply informs them she'll be looking forward to them eating humble pie. In the GCAC, Summer spots Daniel in a chair and walks up to say now she knows why he didn't return her phone calls. He was too busy stabbing their mom in the back. Daniel sighs, I should have known Kyle wouldn't be able to keep his mouth shut. Summer sniffs that her husband has more respect for her than he does. Daniel says he took the necessary steps to end this and protect them all. I kept you name out of it, so you're welcome. Summer fumes that she had to scramble to make sure of her story aligned with his and asks, What the hell were you thinking? Daniel doesn't take orders from her. He says they need to find Phyllis and sort this out or their mother is screwed. Victoria finds Nate waiting in her office and assures him she doesn't mind. She knows he's conflicted and wonders if she can help. Nate decides to show her where he'd like things to go and starts kissing her. When they finally part, Victoria admits she wasn't expecting that. Nate thought it was necessary. He's been doing a lot of thinking about her and about them. I broke Elena's heart and I wish I hadn't. But what you and I have can't be denied. Trying to ignore, it isn't possible. Vicky agrees it's not even remotely possible. She kisses him and starts taking his jacket off as Nick knocks on the door and calls out. Victoria lets her brother in and he asks if it's a bad time. He and Nate exchange a curt greeting as Nate exits. Nick calls his sister out, but she's not interested in another lecture from him. Nick declares that Nate is playing her and taking advantage of her interest in him. He's hurt Elena and his family and has no scruples. I can smell his ambition from a mile away. Victoria happens to like it that he's ambitious. It's nothing to be embarrassed about and the company needs people like that. Nick wonders if she's implying that he doesn't pull his weight around there because he's not power-hungry. At Crimson Lights, Michael guesses Phyllis doesn't want to turn herself in given what she's done. What if there's never another sighting or any evidence she's alive? Lauren worries that Daniel will look unstable. Michael guesses that Phyllis is laying low and considering her options, just as he would do. Lauren feels he'd never be in this position, but Michael disagrees. There was a time. Lauren says people will want Phyllis' head on a platter. Michael says they'll get past this and so will you. Lauren wants her home and safe and asks, what's your next move? Michael is mulling a few options. Lauren hopes they're genius because it's going to be hard to find someone as cagey as Phyllis. At the GTAC, Summer rants at Daniel that he betrayed her and their mom. He decided he knew best and went to Jack. You didn't handle anything. She says he's just made it more complicated, even Diane knows. Does he really think Phyllis would even consider coming back with the whole town turning their back on her? She complains about him putting her in the position of having to act stunned about all of this as well. Daniel counters that he covered for her so Kyle wouldn't know she had knowledge that could exonerate his mother and hid it. Summer hopes he doesn't expect any gratitude from her because what he did was wrong and completely unfair to her. Kyle suddenly appears and tells them to calm down before asking, what's going on? In the park, Tucker and Ashley speculate about Diane's comment about eating humble pie. Ashley decides she doesn't want to play into her hand by talking about her. Tucker reveals he has a plan later. He's hoping to get permission to watch Dom in his music group. He muses about all the free time he has now after so many years of working. Too much work. If I want to know my grandson, it's got to be now. Same with Divin, same with you. At Newman, Victoria tells Nick his work is fine. 
Nick spouts that his behind-the-scenes work may not be glamorous, but he's also not using the private jet to fly off to Los Angeles for trysts with the employees. Victoria argues it was a legitimate business trip. Nick wonders what kind of business Elena caught them doing. Victoria is sick of his self-righteousness and tells her brother this doesn't involve him. Nick tells her he saw Alina last night and she's heartbroken. Victoria admits it wasn't the smartest idea to pursue someone who wasn't single, but Nate makes her feel respected and admired. The things she no longer felt when she found out Ashland was using her. At the GCAC, Summer tells Kyle that finding all of this out has done a number on her. Kyle says it's Matt Daniel's fault. If anything wasn't fair, it was Phyllis' decision not to reach out to both of them. Daniel's sure she had her reasons. Kyle is sure she didn't reach out to Summer because of who she's married to, but please don't jump all over Daniel, because none of this is his fault. Summer raises her eyebrows and shoots Daniel a look. Kyle asks if he missed something. What was that? On Crimson Lights patio, Lauren listens to Michael on the phone. He says, excellent work, Alan, and then disconnects. Michael tells Lauren that his private investigator hit pay dirt. I think this is the big break we've been working for. In the park, Tucker and Ashley watch Dom on the bongos on his phone. She's impressed that he can sit through all of that. Tucker thinks his grandson has something special. Ashley bumps him with her shoulder and says she was thinking that if he goes back to the house, he could slide his things into her room maybe. He teases, I kinda like my room. I'll think about it. At Newman, Nick recaps that Victoria was married to a liar, but Nate is capable of deception just like Ashland and JT. There's a pattern, Vic. She insists her eyes are wide open. If he can't trust her, then he should keep his thoughts to himself, so they're not constantly at odds. Outside the office, Audra pushes the elevator button and glances at Victoria's closed office door. Nate gets off the elevator. They exchange a look, and then go their separate ways. In the GCAC, Summer tells Kyle that she wasn't attacking Daniel, but there's a lot of guilt there. She wants to go to the office and walks off. At the door, Kyle confronts her for meeting with Daniel without him. Why is she doing these things alone like they're not together? Summer says she has something to do and will meet him later. Kyle's jaw drops as she walks out the revolving door. On the coffeehouse patio, Michael tells Lauren that Stark died before he could finish the paperwork to collect Phyllis life insurance. He died before he could cash out. He was able to get the registration information, which was a low-rent hotel on the outskirts of Geno City. Lauren thinks it's the perfect place for a supposedly dead woman to hide out. Michael starts dialing his phone. He's sure Jack would love to hear where Phyllis may be hiding.